Good singing choir. Amen. Good to see everyone in the house of the Lord this morning. Thank God that we know a man who can this morning. Amen. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly above what we even think or ask according to the power which worketh in us. Amen. I believe that. I've seen him do it in my life. I've seen him do it in other people's life. I am a witness to the one true God who is able to do that that you need this morning, whatever it may be. Thank you for coming to the house of the Lord. I know everyone's probably a little tired this morning, but what a great week we've had at Vacation Bible School here at the church. Um, um, uh, uh, probably around 100 or more every night. Uh, I haven't looked at the numbers, but uh, I know there was a good crowd, and we thank you for all that you've did. Uh, I, I watched too. I sat back and, and watched people and uh, working and laboring and just uh, uh, doing things for God, and it'll pay off. Amen. Pay is out of this world, they always say, when we do things for the Lord. And so thank you for all that, all your labor that you've done. And I know tonight we'll finish up. And so uh, thank you again for what you've done. Thank you for being here this morning. I want us to take our Bibles this morning and turn to John chapter 1. And I want to read a couple verses there, John chapter 1. And I'd like to say that uh, while we're turning in our Bibles that thank the Lord for our Sunday school. Amen. I'm so glad that I get to sit in Sunday school and learn the Word of God. Uh, I, I, I tell you, I don't want to swell up our teacher's head, but I, I was going to say something's happening to him, but it may be something happening to me. Amen. I don't want to blame it all on him, but he has really been doing some great teaching. Amen. I do believe this. If you'll pray for your teacher, he'll teach better. Amen. If you'll study yourself, he'll teach better. And it applies to all throughout the work of the Lord. Amen. If we pray one for another, for the effectual prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Amen. And uh, if you pray for much for the teaching, you'll get much out of it, I promise you. And uh, my, my, what great. He challenged us today. He, uh, he got a little plain there. Amen. All that were here and got your sto- toes stepped on, say amen. 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 Got a little plane on us this morning, and, and I tell you, I didn't mind it one bit. If you need to talk to me, talk to me, amen. Tell me where I fall short, and help me through the word, amen. And that's what he was doing flat out. Hear what he said. He said it's a hard convince to say I love God and you're not busy about his business. He, did, he wasn't mean, he wasn't hateful, he wasn't throwing rocks, he wasn't judgmental, he was just in the word. And he said, it's a hard convince to say, I love God, yet we do nothing for him. And I want to look into the word of God this morning, and I know I told you to turn to John chapter 1, but I want to ask my scripture person, I, I don't even know who that is this morning, but I want to ask my scripture person to pull up on the screen, that verse in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 9. Hold your place in your Bible, and I want to read uh, uh, this scripture uh, in the Bible. We know, uh, I pray we know the story of the garden, uh, how sin became uh, into the world. Uh, uh, God had put Adam and Eve into a perfect place to tend to a, a perfect place. And he said, uh, you can eat of all the trees, but the tree of, of, of knowledge of good and evil, do not eat of that tree. Uh, for the day you eat it, you shall surely die. So Satan came in and tempted them, and they eat of that tree. And uh, um, um, here they run, they, they hid themselves, they looked down and realized uh, they were naked, and they went and tried to cover it. Oh, how sin will destroy us in our lives. And, and they, they went and they tried to cover it up, and we put, pick up here in verse number 9. We only made it three chapters in the Bible before mankind had already messed up. And God come to them. God always walked to them in the cool of the day. The voice of the Lord would walk with them in the cool of the day. And he's coming to do what he's always done. And then God would look and he would uh, not see Adam and Eve where they were supposed to be. And he said, and the Lord God called unto Adam. Brother Thomas, I remember when he called my name. I remember when he called my name, 
Huh? Do you remember when he called your name? And he called unto Adam and said, Listen now, where art thou? And you know, God's the same God that he was back then. God said, I am the Lord and I change not. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Uh, God does never change. And God's question to us today, hey, from the front pew to the back, even into the sound room, he is asking a question this morning. It has not changed. God's not going to throw something on you that you cannot answer. He's asking this morning, where are thou? And this morning you're not pew seven, not pew eight, not the front row, not trying to hide in the back somewhere. God's asking you, where are you this morning? God's asking the deacons this morning, where are they at? God asks the Sunday school teacher this morning, where are you at? God's asking the trustees, where are you this morning? God's asking the song leaders. Hey, hey, God's asking the youth leaders. Hey, God's asking the piano player. God's asking you, where are you? The question still remains the same. God's looking down right here behind this pulpit and saying, all right, preacher, where are you this morning? Where are we spiritually? That's what. See, God never asks a question because he don't know the answer. God asks a question so you'll know the answer. And he's asking this morning, where are you? Where are you? Brother Jay, you said we pleaded for weeks for people to get right, and get on board, and get going for God. Can we do it just a little bit longer? Say, where are you this morning? As we pray. Father, we love you and we thank you, Lord, for your word. God, we ask you, Lord, to let it do, God, only what it can do this morning. Uh, God, it's a lamp into our feet and a light into our path. God, your word is forever settled in heaven. Uh, God, your word will stand when everything else is on fire. Uh, God, you said we ought to hide thy word in our heart that we might not sin against thee, O Lord. Hey, God, help us this morning with your word. Help us to desire to sincere milk of the word that we may grow thereby. God give us the word this morning uh, like you never have. God let it come alive in our hearts and help us to realize where we are in our lives. And God most of all where we are with you God. God I believe there's some that used to walk in the cool of the day with you but God they've walked away. God, they've tried to hide. Uh, God, they've, they've sewed uh, a spiritual fig leaves together in their, uh, hey, in their heart, God. And they've tried to hide from you. But God, you're saying this morning uh, through your word, you are saying, where are you? And God, I believe this morning you want to speak to a heart and get them to a place where they're walking back with you. God, I believe there's some who's never walked with you this morning. And God, you're speaking to them and telling them, where are you at? And God, I pray that your word will do what it can do. Touch us as Christians. Help us this uh, backslid, God, and save us this lost, I pray. And we'll thank you for all that you do. And we pray in the name of Jesus. And all of God's people would say, Amen. John chapter 1. I want us to look there in the word of God. Now, John chapter 1. Look all the way at the end of the chapter. Hey, let's get down to about verse 47 and look at what the Bible says. Hey, there, there, Jesus was calling his disciples in John chapter 1. He's calling his disciples, and guess what his disciples is doing? they going out getting other people to come and see Jesus. Amen. Oh, would to God that the church today would get out and tell other people to come on in and see what God's doing in his house. Amen. Hey, tell our families to come in. Tell our friends to come in. Tell our work co-workers to come in. Tell the ones that live way down the road. Hey, tell them ones we don't even like to come on into the house of the Lord and see what God is doing. So, so Philip's going out and he's telling a good friend of his named Nathaniel. Brother Anthony, that show got me the other day. I told you God was speaking to me. And Philip tells Nathaniel, come on and see. Come and see a man. And Nathaniel acts just like the rest of his brother Leon. He said, huh. 
Galilee? Huh, Jesus from, can anything good come out of Galilee? And he said, well, come and see. Come on to check it out. Hey, you come check it out for yourself. Don't trust in my Jesus. Come on, check him out for yourself. And Nathaniel's walking up, and Jesus is over there, and Philip's bringing him up. And when Nathaniel's walking up, we, te- we, we, we check it out right here. We come in in the story, and it says, Jesus saw Nathaniel coming, unto, coming to him and saith unto him, what did Nathaniel say about Jesus? Can anything good come out of Galilee? Nazareth? And Jesus looked down and said, Behold, an Israelite indeed, whom there is no guile. Where are you this morning? Verse, verse 48 would say, And the thing you would say unto him, Which knowest thou me? How you know me? How foolish it is for us to think that God don't know exactly where we are this morning. I mean, seriously. People think, how do you know me, God? See, just because you've never met God don't mean God don't know you. Hold on now. Y'all ride with me this morning. Hey, look, God. mm, Hey, how do you know me? Jesus answered and said unto him, Before Philip called thee, when thou was under the fig tree, I saw you. Where are you this morning? Can I say, no matter where we are, God sees us. See, what you got to do is you got to look up the fig tree. You got to say, why was he under a fig tree? What you got to realize is, is in that day, a fig tree was a place of shade, amen? And this was a hot climate, amen? And this was a hot place to live in. And, and if under a fig tree with the big leaves was a place a man could get in the shade. And, and a lot of times, men would have fig trees on their farms so they could take a moment. Hey, they could take the early morning, they could take the midday, and they could get up under that fig tree. Guess what they did? They talked to Jehovah God. And Jesus says, you know what? I seen you when you was under the fig tree. In other words, hey, you're a man with no guile. I know who you are, Nathaniel. You are a great man. Hey, I seen you under the fig tree. It wasn't a knockoff on him. It was not a put down on him. Hey, he says, I know who you really are. We can preach and teach and sing and do all the things that we want to do and stand up and do them good. We got, we got some do-gooders around here. But God really sees where we are. He can see it. This morning he can see exactly where. You know what he wants you to do? He wants you to get your mind off right now what the, what the word of God's saying. Right now your mind's getting distracted. And God's trying to show you where you're at. He's trying to say, I see you. I see you sitting right there on that pew, but I know where you're at with me. I know you've been under that fig tree of praying. I know you haven't been under that fig tree. I know where you're at. I can see you. One of the scariest things and greatest things is to know he can see me under the fig tree. Not not behind the, the pulpit. That's where you see me. Not up here breaking up in that iPad, Brother Jay. He sees you on that job. He sees you, Brother Michael, loading them pallets. He sees you, Brother David, exactly where you're at. I saw you under the fig tree. Mm-hmm. He didn't say, I saw you leading vacation Bible school, standing up there and saying, all right, children. I seen you under the fig tree. 
I seen you when you were real. I seen you where you were in your room by yourself. Hey, hey, God said, I seen you when you were alone. I seen you when your wife went to bed and you turned that computer screen on. I seen you, I seen you when that woman looked at you and you know that look, and instead of looking away, you look back. I seen you under the fig tree. I seen you when you should have charged this, but you charged more just because you could get it. I seen you when you told someone something and you done something else. I seen you under the fig tree. Huh? I hope we know this morning, hey, it's not about this public thing. It's not about putting on the suit. It's about being under the fig tree. Who are you under your fig tree? Where are you this morning? God sees us where we are, Nathaniel. He sees us where we are, Nathaniel. He said, I seen you under the fig tree. He sees you from the from the pressure of life. Hey, hey, we all go through it. Ain't none of, hey, ain't none of us exempt from the pressures of life. I seen you. Hey, maybe you pressured from sin. Maybe you're pressured from yourself. Maybe you're pressured from Satan. But he said, I've seen you under the pressure of life. He's seen you under. Under means a low place. I've seen you at your lowest. I've seen you when you were in a low place in your life. When you were fighting depression, the loss of a loved one. Hey, aloneness, loneliness. I've seen you in that place. I've seen you under. I've seen you humble. Is what it means. I've seen you humble. Jeremiah 12, verse 3. He says, Oh Lord, you've seen me. Thou knowest me. Thou've seen me. And you tried me, is what Jeremiah would say. And he asked the question this morning. Where are you? Preacher, I don't want to tell you where I'm at. I don't want you to tell me where you're at. Brother Jay, because a lot of people's going through something I might not be went through. I can't help them. God's asking you where you're at this morning. God's asking you where you're at this morning. God's asking us where we're at. God's saying the same question where you're at this morning. Hey, I want to remind us from the word, the pages of the Bible, He sees you where you are. He sees you where you are. Hey, he sees you where you are. Look in your Bibles now. Let's go way back to the beginning. Let's take it back to the, to the beginning. Let's go to Genesis chapter 21. If you want to turn in your Bibles, Genesis chapter 21 and verse number 9 through 18 is an account in the Bible of a, of a young man being born. His name is Ishmael. This story is about Abraham. This story is about Sarah. This story is about Hagar, and this story is about Ishmael. And this story is about God. This is the story about a young man named Ishmael that was born. Hey, Abraham and Sarah, God says, I'm going to give you a son. I promise you a seed. Hey, when God says he'll promise something, he'll do it. Amen. He ain't never four days late. God's always on time. It don't matter if you're 100 years old and you still ain't had it. God said he'll give it, he'll give it. Uh, whatever happened to walking by faith anyway. So Abraham and Sarah, they're old. They're way past that childbearing. They said, we're going to do something about this promise. Hey, they got Hagar, the maidservant. If you think this was something wrong, it's wrong to us today because we have commandments. We have the word of God to tell us what's right and what's wrong. A man should have one wife. Amen. We know that. Hey, they was not that law in that day. This was not necessarily wrong in, 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 a, in, a, in, a, in a place where you could say this is wrong. Hey, I don't say it was right, but this is what they they did. They took Hagar. Hey, Abraham slept with her and she had a son called Ishmael. Abraham loved him. But that wasn't who God said he was going to give him. Then God gave him that child, Isaac. Ishmael was about 14 years old when Isaac was born. 
Anybody ever had a 14-year-old boy? I wish y'all knew my mama back then. You could have prayed for her. You could, you could say amen. But now, uh, Isaac's born. He's, he's got at least two or three years old. So Ishmael's about 17, 18. Because it says he was aggravating him, if you will. Picking on him. Mocking him. And it upset Isaac. So Isaac had to be old enough to understand that. So at least two or three years old. At least. Sarah says, I can't take it anymore. You're going to have to drive them out. Run them out. Abraham took Hagar, give her some victuals, give her some water, give her some things, and she, she left. She finds herself in verse number 17. Everything's gone. And she takes Isaac, I mean she takes Ishmael, which is a, basically a grown man, young man, puts him under a shrub. And goes about a bow shot away, the Bible says, because she didn't want to watch her son die. And she weeps and cries. Now, we'll say she's praying, but I didn't read that in the Bible. I like to think she was praying. That, I'm not saying she wasn't, but she wept and cried. And in verse 17 of, of Genesis chapter 21, here's what the Bible would say. And God heard the voice of, of the lad. See, that's why I say, where, where's Hagar praying? Brother Jay, people's probably taught she prayed. The verse up in front, look up, she lift up her voice and wept. And God said in verse 17, and God heard the voice of the Lord, uh, of the lad, and the angel of God called to Hagar out of heaven and, and, and said unto her, What aileth thee, Hagar? Fear not, for God hath heard the voice of the lad. Where are you at this morning? Where are you at this morning? No matter where you're at this morning, God sees you. And God hears you. Right where you're at. You may be under the fig tree or you may be just under a little shrub somewhere. But God sees you and hears you. Where you're at this morning. Hey, God sees us and hears us where we're at. Hey, Ishmael is under that shrub. Hey, why? Why, why has this young man got to be under this shrub? Why is his mama? Hey, look, because his father abandoned him. His stepmother despised him. His mother left him. His brother was aggravated by him. Hey, this is one of the Bibles. This is the Bible's first orphan. Everyone has left this young man. He's a casualty of his circumstance. And it's not his fault. But he's still a casualty of it. The three people that organized his birth, that masterminded his birth, has all three turned away from him. Sarah couldn't conceive him or correct him, so she cast him out. Hey, 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 Abraham was great. I'm, this is Bible now. I'm not making this up. Hey, you can read it in the verses. Abraham was grieved with him, so he got up and he got rid of him. And Hagar doesn't spend all the child support. Let the shrub support him. And it sat down on the whole situation. That's Bible. And now he's an orphan. He represents the reject. He represents the flesh. Come on. He represents the one who's not in God's divine will. He's not a preacher's kid. He's not a deacon's daughter. And he's not the one that would fit into mine and your perfect little picture to come to church. He's a nobody with no one. 
in the middle of nowhere. But I'm here to tell us this morning that God hears us right where we are. Right where we are, He hears us. Hey, there's no place that God cannot be. There's no condition in your life that God cannot go. Hey, there's no addiction in your life that God cannot meet you at. There's no rejection you've lived in your life that God cannot fix. Hey, keep on calling out. Hey, keep on because God can hear you right where you're at. He sees us right where we're at. And He can hear us right where we're at. Hey, can I, can I give us some Bible today? Is this okay with everybody? Everybody with me this morning? Huh? I, I believe a lot of people may be quiet this morning because they're, they're realizing where they're at in their life. Hey, I want to tell you something. No matter what life has done to you, no matter what people in your life has done to you, God can hear you and He sees you right where you're at. Yeah. Whale guts in the bottom of the sea couldn't keep God from hearing Jonah. Huh? Hey, listen to me now. Let me give us some Bible. Hey, 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 a great stone and death itself could not stop God from calling out to Lazarus. The innermost part of the prison could not God, stop God from getting to Peter. Chains on his hands and his feet could not stop God from setting Paul free. Storms couldn't stop the disciples. Demons couldn't stop Mary. And I'm persuaded that neither death nor life nor height nor principalities nor things present nor things to come can separate us from the love of God. Amen. Can tribulation... Can powers, can perils, can the sword? What can separate us? God sees you. Where you at? God hears you. Right where you at? Am I in the Bible? I tell you, I don't want to be out of the Bible. I don't want to be one of those make up stuff. God can get to us right where we're at. No matter where you are in life. No matter what people's done to you in life. What you were born in is not what you were born for. Where you are is not where God can get you. Where are you this morning? God sees us right where we are. And God hears us right where we are. And as I kept reading, see, we need God because we got fig trees that we have to. We need God because we got shrubs with those under. And God seen that. And God heard that. And God became us. Right where we're at. He became us. Right where we're at. I can give us some in-depth scripture, but I can give us one we all know. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to whosoever believeth him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. God became us. Right where we were. Give me Hebrews 2, 17. Let, let me get, because may, maybe some said, I don't, I don't, I, wherefore, in all things, it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren. He was born in a womb. He had to go to a place under a fig tree. He would not be cast on a shrub, but they would throw him on a cross. Hebrews 7 and 26, listen now, listen what the Bible says. I just want to take it on its surface. Here's what it says. Give me the next Hebrews. 
Hebrews 5 or 7, 26, I'm sorry. Hebrews 7, 26. Here's what the Bible says in that. It says that he became us. Look, for such an high priest became us. Jesus is our high priest. He became us. See, he was, he was just like us. But the scripture wants to make it clear now, because some of you, some of you are out, hold on, really? Hold on. Wait a minute, preacher. But the scripture wants to make it clear. He was just like us, but watch. But he was holy. He was harmless. He was undefiled. He was separate from sinners. Huh? Huh? Hey, when I say he became like us, don't you think he was a sinful man? No, Lord, have mercy. No one would. Uh, if you start teaching that, Brother Jay, we'll, we'll set them down. All I got to do is look at Deacon dude right there. They set him down. But he became us. We have not a high priest who's not been touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but in all points tempted like ye, we, yet without sin. But he became like us. He became a man, 100%. The Bible says this, he was made, you ready, you ready? He was made under the law. To redeem us, that was under the law. That's what the Bible says, same verse. Hey, hey, re, re, re. he was made under the law to redeem us, that was under the law. Hey, God came to be with us. Isaiah, Isaiah 7, 14 says it like this. Now, hold on. Hold, hold, hold your little follow with me. Here's what Isaiah said. Seven, four, I'm almost done. Here's what he says. Isaiah 7, 14. For such a high... No, no, give, give, give me Isaiah. Isaiah 7, 14. Everybody knows it, but give it to me anyway. Isaiah. Here's what the Bible says. I can quote it to us. It says, a virgin shall conceive, and she shall bring forth a son, and you shall call his name. Somebody help me. Emmanuel. What does that mean, Brother Wayne? What? God with us. Y'all ready? See, see, Nathaniel was seen by God right where he was under the fig tree. Ishmael was heard by God right under that shrub. Right where he was, the Bible says. And now Emmanuel is with us. Did you notice that they all ended with L? Brother Jay, what is L in the Bible? God. What is L? What does it stand for? God. I asked him. He knew. <laughs> it means God, don't it? Yeah, hey, you, hey ba basic theologians know that. L stands for God in the Bible. Hey, can, can I say something? Nathaniel felt like he was all by himself underneath that fig tree, but L there with him. Hey, hey, Ishmael felt like everyone had thrown him to the side and he was all by himself, but El was there with him. God says, I'm going to become like you so I can be with you. Nathaniel, God sees. Ishmael, God hears. Emmanuel, God is with us. Nathaniel was under the tree. Ishmael was under the shrub. And because of Emmanuel, we can get under grace. Oh, yeah. Yeah, if you say that's where you at. Huh? I feel like I'm under a fig tree. Yeah, but you under grace. Huh? I know grace sometimes feels like a fig tree. Hey, grace may feel like old shrub sometimes. But we're under grace. 
if we trusted in Emmanuel. Hey, can I say something? No matter what your name may be, hey, God's in the midst of that name. Hey, God's with you. Hey, God sees where you're at. What am I trying to say? Hey, he come to be with us. But this morning, if you're in your life and you're unspiritual, you're not walking with God, Brother Jay. You're not serving God. You're not doing something for God. If you're here this morning, don't even plan to come back tonight. Hey, if your life, you know where you're at, you need to come back to where you need to be. Hey, you need to put L at the end of your name. I just, I just remember the old song. I want to sign your name at the end of this day and admit my heart was true. Let my life song sing for you. I want his name at the end of mine. This morning, if you need to be saved, you know where you're at. Come get us a song or something. Here's what the Bible says. You ready? If you're lost this morning, let me give us a scripture. For there is none other name under heaven. I'm feeling under today. I, where I'm at is under. There's none other name given under heaven whereby we must be saved but at the name of Jesus Christ. There's none other name given under heaven among men whereby we must be saved but at the name of Jesus. How about you this morning? Do you have his name at the end of your name? Do you have his name at the end of your name? Where are you this morning? Where are we this morning? Hey, you feeling under? You can come and get under the blood as we all stand this morning. Where are you? Where are you this morning? Hey, he sees you. You can't hide this morning. He can hear you if you cry out to him. And he wants you to put his name at the end of your name. Where are you this morning? Don't leave in the place you came. But you know you've never been saved. God sees you where you're at this morning. God sees us where we're at this morning. Where are you? What's it going to take for you this morning? We read clearly God sees us. He can't hide. Read clearly God hears us. His ears not short that He could not hear. What are you waiting on, friend? What are you waiting on? Hey, you, you want someone else to step out first? Huh? Has the devil told you to sit right there? Prayer words be praying. Somebody, thank you, brother. Somebody else step out to show them that there's an altar that we can come to this morning. Hey, give, give that one that's scared that other people's going to judge. I wouldn't be worried about what no one else thinks this morning. I would get where I need to be with God this morning. Prayer warriors be praying right now. God speaking to your heart this morning. Where are you? Hey, where are you this morning? The devil's telling you to wait a while. The devil's telling you you can do it another service. Your flesh is get, has got you scared to step out. You, you're afraid someone's going to judge you. Hey, maybe you're a leader in the church and you know you're not. Hey, you're scared what someone else is going to think. I'd be worried about what God thinks of me. I 
about it this morning, maybe one. Prayer warriors be praying right now, maybe one this morning. You know where you're at, friend. Hey, I love you. I love you this morning. But reality is, I I know where you're at. That didn't sound, Brother Jay, I know that didn't sound nice. But Dave, I look out this way though. Where are you at this morning? Where you're at is not where God wants you to be. What you going to do about it this morning? What you going to do about it this morning? Are you going to stay where you're at? You know you're not where God wants you. Too long. Preacher, leave me alone now. Preacher, go ahead and close the service. Yeah, but somebody's hanging on right there at the end. They're, they're, they're holding. They're just got their fingertips they're holding on with. God's saying you need to come on now. Get where you need to be at. I sure hate to know that we had a service and someone didn't get an opportunity to get right with God. God loves you this morning. He sees you. He hears you. My soul. And he became like us so we wouldn't have to stay here. He came to set us free this morning. To redeem us is what the Bible says. My strength to be with his mercy and his grace and his help. And just remember tonight at 6 o'clock will be our vacation Bible school commencement uh, here. Uh, we'll just go right on over into the fellowship. Nope. We're going we're gonna to do, start in here. Amen. Then go over for food. Amen. So come right here in the sanctuary. And uh, maybe you hadn't had a chance to make it to Vacation Bible School. Well, come on out tonight. You'll see what all went on. And they'll show. Teachers will show things. And we'll just have a good time in the Lord. Plus, we're going to have a meal. Amen. So remember this tonight at 6 p.m. Also, Blood Drive, July 31st, Monday. Remember this from 3 to 7 o'clock. And all donors is going to receive a T-shirt. Amen. So remember this. Also, uh, for announcement this morning, remember that uh, August the 13th, not next Sunday, but the Sunday after, um, on, in the a.m. hour, we're going to take up a special love offering for Preacher Wayne Skipper and Sister Janie. Um, we know Preacher Wayne's had a, a massive heart attack, and Sister Janie now has a brain tumor that they're going to have chemo and radiation and uh, just been through an awful lot. And uh, we, want, we want to have a special offering. If you, if you know givers that would want to give to a good, good cause, this would be a good time to give as the Lord lays on your heart. And remember this, in that AM service, we will take up this offering two weeks from today. Remember this. Also, Youth Revival will start that night. Amen. And uh, Preacher Thad uh, Jacob Jr. is going to be with us. Junior will be with us. And I, y'all know he's a preaching little man. So uh, uh, pray for him and, 
And we got special singing coming, uh, some young people coming from other churches that's going to really bless your heart. And so be praying about this. Bring all the youth you can. And I know we call it youth revival because we're going to focus on them. But I tell you, we can get revival at any time. Amen. No matter how old we are, don't come because it says youth. Because to somebody else, you are youth. Amen. That's what Sister Doja always told me all the time. She'd say, son. I was over 50. She still called me son. Amen. It's relative. So come on, come on out to the youth revival. Any other announcements? I mean, any questions about commencements tonight? See Sister Dreamer right after church. Also like to see the deacons just for a minute right after service. Ladies Auxiliaries and Men's Meeting, we'll, we will not have that this month, but we will resume next month. And all the other special things the ladies are doing, you're still going to be doing those, so be in touch with that. All right, if all hearts and minds are clear, amen. We sure appreciate everything everybody done. We had a great, great adult class. Thank all the teachers and